Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon here in the Philippines, back at our house at La Conscious Del Mar, Iloilo, Panay Island, the Philippines. Well, I've been busy all morning with my friends and joined Cap and joined Bill and Rose and, and Melinda. I joined her just a little bit. And Melinda's been cooking up some good food. Boy, I just filled up that belly from lunch. Woo! Cap and I, we spent the morning snorkeling around out back. And I was just trying to relieve a little bit of a headache. And some reason, going out there floating on that water with that snorkel, just actually just kind of floating face down like that and relaxing in that water and looking at whatever I can see, if not much there sometimes. It is so therapeutic, it's unbelievable. And it really helps uh, bring me down and relieve all of that. So uh, thank you for that God's medicine. The guys, they've been working all morning and haven't covered it yet. They pulled the forms on the little wall that they poured for the CR down at the ground when he first came in. I want to bring up about that CR. Somebody wrote in a comment, you know, you're building another CR. They've been a great place for plants and all. Um, we don't need another place for plants. We got plenty of places for plants. But let me explain about that CR. This house that we're building here, it's not just only a home. Um, it's a place for people can come, rent a room, enjoy the beach, stay here, relax. And we can also host events. Somebody's having an anniversary party. Somebody's having a birthday party, a class reunion. Uh, whatever their event is that they're wanting to celebrate, they can book this place in the future. They can book this place. And um, there's some local caterers that we can work with that's willing to work with us and all, um, even right now, and uh, if we wanted to do something right this minute. And... There'll be a lot of people on the property. The, the commenter said, you know, you already got three restrooms on the ground floor. Well, correction, there's four restrooms on the ground floor, but only one of those is for just any and everybody to use, and that's the one out in the yard out there, the outdoor CR. Um, the others are for private guest rooms, so, you know, you're not just going to let whoever walk into somebody's private guest room. That ain't going to happen, plus doors locked. So those are not included. And we've already had parties and guests and all here. Uh, birthday parties, my birthday party, Melinda's birthday party, Alexander's birthday party, uh, just random gatherings with friends. We've had Thanksgiving, we've had Christmas events and stuff that we have found that that one outdoor CR gets overworked. They will be waiting their turn in line uh, to use it in there. And we're, we realized we really had a deficit for enough ground floor, ground level restrooms. And that is why I decided to put that one in right there. <clears throat> so we live a little ways out of the city. Let's say you rode a bus here, you rode a taxi here, let's say that you drove your own vehicle here. You know, there's not a lot of public restroom places along the road. So when you get here, we found ourselves, we found guests a lot of times. They're ready for a little relief, you know? Like, whoo, first thing you wanna do is get to the restroom. And that's gonna be handy right there at the very front. When you come to the gate, there's a restroom you can go to right there. So trying to be wise with all this, remember this again and again and again. This is not just a house. Mel and I, we could literally live in a shoebox. We don't care. Isn't that right, babe? Oh, yes. I mean, she'll tell you, we we might have built all of this. Melinda had no doings and none of this. This was all me and my plans. But we were really happy living in a small house. 
but this is a place for friends and family and parties and to enjoy and for bookings and earn a little income back for our investment and all. Um, so that's the reason that it has so much to it. It's not just a simple basic home. And with that, I'm going to get back busy here on this not so simple and basic home. So here we are upstairs up here. So nice to have this roof on now and gutters. And I am up here about to make some switches around on our electricity. We've got two of these inverters. This one here has just been hanging here as a temporary measure for a while. Um, when I kind of thought about how I want to put things here. But it's not where I want it. I've got conduits coming out through the wall. Uh, for different leads that are coming through for different powers and all down the floor too for solar arrays for wind generator for all those things but I need to also have for my batteries this is just one of of several and so what I'm, I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, both inverters mounted now I wanted to put them side by side right here and you need a certain spacing on the side for it to be able to breathe. It's got where fan draws the air here, blows it out down here. And it's that way on both sides. So you don't want to get it too close to a wall. You don't want to get your two inverters too close together also so they can properly cool. So um, then you need to read this display right here. And I've noticed if the display is too high and it's at an angle, the shininess of this screen, it's hard to read it. If it's too low, you're stooping all down. So you really want them at eye level. Uh, for me, it need to be seven inches higher than it is right now. So I made little markings up here on the wall. Uh, this wall right here is unfinished as far as being textured or anything. So I didn't mind if I penciled all over it. And I penciled in uh, where this is going up here. Uh, it's going to get raised up that seven inches and that's going to put this display right in front of my eyes here and the display on the other one right here and it leaves me plenty of room down below for the batteries but the next thing is if i ever want to upgrade uh to a different style inverter and maybe it's got different dimensions and all that i have a little room to move up and down and or in the middle if it's just one great big one which i'm against doing because you lose that one inverter you lost everything redundancy is what i like uh so this way i'm gonna lay it out then i've got these other things that's going to be put up i've got these um hybrid mppt wind and solar hybrid controllers right here and there's one here there's another one here i need to mount them i believe the wiring is this wiring right here uh I think I'll put them right here to the side, but then they have a dump load that goes on them for the wind part. And there'll be two of these dump loads. And now these will produce some heat because when it's dumping that load, this is like a resistance coil here, kind of like in a hairdryer or a heating element. And of course, if it's making resistance, it's making heat. And so it's gonna go to that. And that's only if the batteries were completely full of power and the wind generator is still producing. It needs somewhere to go with that power uh, so it's not free spinning. It needs some resistance. So it's important to have that. So once this is all set over in place, I think I can put them right over here to the side. In the end, I plan on making a cabinet out around all of this. So you will not see the equipment and you won't hear those fans at the, the decibel level you hear them at right now. I will go on against this wall right here out with a piece of plywood, same thing over here, and I'll build a cabinetry, a cabinet in around them with louvers in it so that air can circulate and breathe. Now this wall here doesn't get hot now that this roof is on outside, there's no direct sunlight or anything, and the inverters are to the inside of the house, which is usually being kept cool, so there should not be a heating issue anyway. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm about to make some marks up here again where my screws are gonna land. Go ahead and drill in, set some anchors, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this inverter over here first and then get prepared for the second one that's down in the garage and get prepared to move the batteries in right here. 
All right, well, as you see, we're moving the batteries and I got the two inverters mounted up right here now. And we're gonna do this time instead of the batteries all in one tall stack of four, it's gonna be a two and two right here. And I'm gonna have to uh, put the DC breaker in for the batteries here. I've got a lot of different stuff. I gotta put the PV shutoff switch in here also. And I'm going to immediately start shopping out I've, uh, for some additional solar panels and some tracks to put up here on the roof. I, I want to go ahead and maximize what I can do as far as uh, with these inverters and these batteries. How heavy? Real heavy? Diabetes the first. Woo! All right, there they are. We'll continue on here with the battery installation. Um, these have some plates for anchoring down on the floor right here. You drill in, you put some anchor bolts. Be all honesty, I didn't want to drill my floor tile. Um, I did something that is kind of a little bit of the Filipino way. I didn't want that battery sitting directly on the floor. So I cut up an old slipper, the mate to this one right here. I cut it up into some nice strips, some nice uh, rectangle strips, and I put it underneath that pad and I took a couple blocks to them underneath the front. And that way it's up off the floor. I don't have to worry about uh, moisture or anything like that, you know, just sweating condensation um, on that metal case down below. And then I'm not doing a four stack high on these. I'm gonna do a two and two. These brackets are for stacking the batteries together and fastening them like that right there. Um, but I don't need these two brackets now. But this time I had these in the garage. This goes to these batteries. And this is a different bracket for bolting it to the wall. Now I don't mind drilling the wall. It's easier to patch than a hole in a ceramic tile or a porcelain tile. So I'll just take the screws out over here and put them here and I'll drill in and put some anchors. Now that's very important because you do not want these heavy batteries falling over. Well, everybody's getting on towards the evening time, starting to kind of get a little dark. I have continued up here working on this, um, trying to gather up all of my equipment, get stuff detached out of the garage where it's been for so long, get it reattached up here. And I'm trying to balance these batteries right now. So I've got all the communication cables together because this has a BMS and all these batteries can communicate with each other. And right now, without any kind of load being pulled off of them and a little bit of charge coming in from solar into them, I am balancing them out right now. So these three batteries here, are now taking power and bringing it over here to this one and getting it balanced out. So I'm gonna let it sit here like that and they will balance their power all with each other before I connect it to inverter and start pulling load or anything like that. So that's what's happening here on that. It'll probably happen overnight. Now I've got a bolt between them right now. Uh, that's only a temporary measure. I just love all these little bar tops everywhere. They are all so nice. Isn't that nice, man? Just check that out. Really come out nice. I'm gonna come on down here and show you what Mop Mock and them have been working on. I'll show you a little bit of what Joel did. One of the little small projects Joel did today is he added in some tile right there because we got a little stopper edge over here on all other places, but we didn't have none there. So he noticed that and he went ahead and added that in. And the guys just finished work. I just missed them, but they had got the CR wall poured right here. So it's all up. Uh, they had to have room to pour in the top. So they had to leave a gap and then they rendered that in by hand and 
they uh, were rendering in the doorway right here today down this side see they just thinking might might put plastic over so we didn't get rendering stuff on the stone so he's just about got it looks like he was just almost done he can finish this last bit up in the morning uh, their plywood was pretty old and tired so the wall got a little wavy inside and they're on a couple places because man we were just using old bits and pieces left of form board so we got bill and rose staying right up here in the front small guest room right now which is nice it gives them our own little bathroom um bed everything right there for the moment so you put your cable in right there you got your dies in tighten this down where it says on and start pumping the handle and it'll squeeze down a crimp on it do this laying down here where i do it one-handed i own so many tripods and i hate using them <laughs> do everything on the fly <sighs> Crampy. I'm gonna put the camera down just for a second. And as you can see, it went up in there nice and clean. It looks really good. I need to tighten this lug down on it really good and tight now. We're cutting out the safety rails here. Um, we're cutting a section out right here because we're gonna have a set of gates built to put in right there and we need to pass through there right now because we're gonna be doing some tile work over there. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna cut it and it's gonna have a gate put right here. And when everybody else is out of the way, I already call them any time right now, they're going to uh, put railing on around over here and build me some gates so then they can chop this how they want if they want to put a radius or something there but for right now we're going to go ahead and cut this part out on both sides they'll probably be able to take those pieces and actually make the gate 